Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I uh, represent San Sanford Obama area concerned citizens, a group from Brook County in the southern here. Um, as a demo in my hand is two nickels. Each one weighs about four or five grams, so that's ten grams. Ten grams of radium salt would be enough to contaminate a trillion gallons of water to the level that would exceed the EPA regulatory level for drinking water. That would be about something less than a square mile of water, a cubic mile of water. So, my point one, only treatment plants capable of dealing with radium and documenting the radium content can be allowed to treat the wastewater. The state proposes allowing sewage plants to treat drilling waste. Drilling wastewater is clearly known to contain potentially high levels of radium. Currently, wastewater treatment plants in New York State are not required to screen for radium content of water brought for treatment or the radium content of the drilling of the drilling. Um, Two important points here. One, they are already accepting leachate from the Shalom County dump, which accepts drill cuttings from PA. Two, a miner of the town where this dump and wastewater treatment plant is located is already known for its cancer spike of unknown origins. If in the future contamination were originating from the crude produce water or leachate from the drill cuttings, how will any lawyer win a case without having documentation of the proportion of radium contributed by the dumps, leachate, and wastewater brought by the industry for treatment? I urge the DEC to require wastewater not only to be treated in facilities capable of treating radium waste, waste and facilities that are required to screen both inbound liquid water brought for treatment and treated water exiting the facility for radium. Point two, environmental impact review must be comprehensive and cover impacts of development infrastructure, otherwise environmental justice will not exist. The aspects cannot be approved until the state has established what single state entity is responsible for the overall comprehensive environmental impact. If no single department is responsible for this, then the public is therefore not protected from unreasonable asset transfer. Please let me explain this. In the town of Stanford, dairy farming has been a dying industry for decades. Currently, the family farm is suffering from stiff competition from capital, that is, concentrated animal feed operations. The point is that the land as an asset is no longer valued as for dairy production. When family farms do default, the farmers try to maximize profit by selling their land in 30, 50 acre lots for vacation homes. This currently, selling land as vacation homes, is the highest attainable value for the land. If you doubt me, ask any farmer in the southern tier. The vacation home industry only exists for the clean air, clean water, lack of noise, and light pollution. By permitting a well, you therefore must accept, consequently, a pipeline will be approved. <laughs> and therefore a compressor station. While clean air, water, lack of noise, and light pollution might not sound like real assets, they have an interesting value. Any economics 101 course will teach that the value of an asset is measured by what the people are willing to pay for which therefore makes these qualities as real, if not more so, than the gas being extracted. Because we know the value of the land for vacation homes. If no state department is responsible for comprehensive environmental impact review, including the infrastructure, 
that in this permitting process may represent the single most massive asset transfer of American citizens in the history of the United States from all vacation home holders in New York State over the Marcellus Shale. The stockholders in various companies representing the industry. Most vacation homeowners live elsewhere. They are not even registered to vote in the towns that plan to drill. The analysis of public health impacts must be complete before any permits are issued. It must include PA and PA 2010 cancer registry data, which is just coming out now. And for all states engaged in high volume hydraulic fracking, anything less would be negligent. Currently, we hear there are four pipelines scheduled to go through our town, and as for most groups in the Southern Frontier, most people, we have very little uh, funds to deal with trying to um, let it for be a party to these, these cases. Compulsory integration is a concern to us because it represents a way that we have no right to basically resist whether we're going to be drilled or not. The combination of rules for compulsory integration and rules which allow the least holding company to create a drilling unit effectively creates a situation where, for instance, a neighbor of mine, the Van Slice, which have about 400 acres, are divided between most likely four drilling units. This means that, in spite of the fact that they sign no lease, they will be integrated and gas will be taken from them. I personally, I do not think this is fair. And if a farm owner with 400 acres cannot stop the process from being developed on their land, then I pose a question to you, who can? Um, the farmers in the southern tier, I'll, I'll wrap this up very quickly. The farmers of the southern tier are suffering greatly due to economics. In 2008, um, the financial crisis has caused great suffering in that area. A lot of their industry was running off, I believe, housing. Uh, in the future, I do also believe that renewable energies are more expensive than natural gas. However, if you look at the future and you say, what is going to be the future of New York State when we are running off renewable energies? I know what kind of farm we will have. It's going to be a family farm. And I don't think we deserve to risk that. They need help. But this is not